Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wicked Encounters, where we explore just what goes bump in the night. I'm your host, Allie, and it's every horror, supernatural, or cryptid lover's favorite month of the year, October. In celebration of the spookiest month, I've compiled a list of videos that I think are worth sharing with you guys, and I'm calling it the 31 Days of Wicked Horror. We're on the third day of October now, so I'll give you a bit of a reminder on how I've selected these videos. First off, none of the videos are going to be older than 20 years. That way, we can add some newer videos to our must-watch list instead of continuing to repeat the same ones from 50 years ago. The thing I'm unfortunately looking at you now. Secondly, I'll be providing the synopsis and plot of the movies for those who may not like surprises or just want to listen to know what the movie's about. There will also be a slide letting you know when we're coming up on it, and I'll let you know where it's safe to click on in the timestamp, just so you don't have any spoilers. Also, while many of the movies are streamable, I'm not going to provide the info on where you can watch them because it varies based on where you live. And also, streaming services love removing and adding movies like There's No Tomorrow. I'm pretty sure Netflix has added and removed The Conjuring about five times? Ugh. Finally, I'm going to give you some reasons as to why the movie stands out and why I think you'll like it. So with that, the third movie on our list is The Witch. The Witch is a 2015 folk horror film written and directed by Robert Eggers in his feature directorial debut and was produced by Parts and Labor, RT Features, Rook's Nest Entertainment, Maiden Voyage Pictures, Mott Street Pictures, holy shit, I'm only halfway through this bitch, Code Red Productions, Scythia Films, Pulse Films, and finally, Special Projects. Jesus Christ, why were there so many? Set in 1630s New England, it follows a Puritan family that is banished from their community and begins living in isolation near a dark, ominous forest. Strange and terrifying events unfold, leading to paranoia, accusations of witchcraft, and the unraveling of the family as sinister forces seem to influence their fate. The movie explores themes of religious fanaticism, fear, and the supernatural. An interesting, if not a bit been there, done that premise. So what makes it stand out? Well, for starters, the witch is meticulously crafted to reflect the time period in which it is set. The dialogue is written in early modern English, based on historical documents from the 17th century. The attention to detail in the costumes, set design, and overall atmosphere immerses the audience in the puritanical world of the 1630s, making the horror feel grounded and real. There's also the type of horror. The film is less about overt scares and more about the slow, creeping dread that permeates every scene. The horror comes from the psychological unraveling of the family, exacerbated by their isolation, religious fanaticism, and the harsh environment. This makes the horror feel intimate and personal, as it delves into themes of sin, guilt, and the fear of the unknown. Similar to our last video, there's a lot of social commentary. The witch explores the oppressive nature of religious fanaticism and the rigid social structures of the time. The film portrays how these forces can lead to paranoia, scapegoating, and ultimately, the destruction of family. It also examines the role of women in Puritan society, with Tomasin really observing the structures and the strict regiment that has been placed upon her. The film is visually striking, with its bleak overcast landscapes and dimly lit interiors that enhance that sense of dread. The cinematography, combined with a haunting score, creates an oppressive and eerie atmosphere that lingers long after the film ends. The use of natural lighting and long takes contribute to the film's immersive quality. The Witch leaves a lot open to interpretation, blurring the line between reality and the supernatural. While certain themes are real within the context of the film, the psychological toll on the family and their descent into, well, not being very well off, 
suggests that the true horror might lie in their own minds. This ambiguity invites multiple viewings and discussions, making the film more thought-provoking than many traditional horror movies. As mentioned before, the horror in The Witch is not so much in its jump scares or its gore. It uses subtlety and restraint to build its tension. The horror is often implied rather than shown, which makes the moments of explicit terror much more impactful. The film's pacing allows for a slow buildup of fear, culminating in a deeply unsettling finale. The performances and character development that the actors put into this is absolutely phenomenal. Anya Taylor-Joy's breakout performance as Tomasin is central to the film's success. Her portrayal of a young woman caught between her religious upbringing and her burgeoning independence is both haunting and sympathetic. The supporting cast, particularly Ralph Einson and Kate Dickey, deliver powerful performances that convey the deep emotional and psychological strain experienced by the family. Finally, the witch draws heavily from New England folklore and witchcraft mythology. These elements group the supernatural aspects of the film in a historical and cultural context, making them much more believable and terrifying. The witch stands out in the horror genre for its commitment to historical accuracy, its psychological depth, and its atmospheric tension. It is a film that relies on the power of suggestion and the audience's imagination, making it a haunting and memorable experience. We're going to explore just how haunting and memorable now, so if you want to know more about the plot, stick around. Otherwise, I'll see you in just a moment if you decide to skip to the timestamp provided in 3, 2, 1. Set in 1630s New England, a time and place steeped in religious fervor and superstition, the witch follows a deeply devout Puritan family that is exiled from their colonial plantation due to a religious dispute with the governing authorities. The family, led by the father, William, decides to build a farm on the edge of an ominous forest far from the safety of the colony. The family consists of William, his wife Catherine, their teenage daughter Tomasin, their younger son Caleb, and the twins Mercy and Jonas. Catherine is also caring for their newborn baby, Samuel. As they struggle to cultivate their land and sustain themselves, things begin to take a dark turn. One day, while Tomasin is playing peekaboo with Samuel, the baby mysteriously vanishes while in her care. The family is devastated, believing that a wolf took Samuel, but there is an underlying fear that something more sinister is at play. Unknown to them, the baby has been taken by a witch who lives in the nearby forest. In a disturbing scene, the witch uses Samuel in a ritual, grinding his body to make a flying ointment. The disappearance of Samuel marks the beginning of the family's descent into paranoia and hysteria. Catherine, overcome with grief, becomes increasingly despondent and begins to lose faith in Tomasin, subtly blaming her for Samuel's disappearance. Meanwhile, William struggles to maintain his authority and faith as the family's crops fail and they face starvation. Caleb, who is entering adolescence, grapples with feelings of guilt and sin, particularly regarding his burgeoning sexual curiosity, which he directs towards his sister, Tomasin. Ew. In an attempt to prove himself and help his family, Caleb ventures into the woods with Tomasin to check the traps they've set for game. However, they encounter a hare, a symbol of the witch, which leads them deeper into the forest. Caleb becomes lost, and stumbles upon the witch's lair. The witch, now appearing as a beautiful young woman, seduces Caleb before revealing her true, terrifying form. Caleb eventually returns to the family, delirious and gravely ill. His condition worsens, and the family prays for his salvation. In a harrowing scene, Caleb has a fit, during which he experiences a religious ecstasy before dying. The twins, Mercy and Jonas, accuse Tomasin of being a witch, claiming that she has bewitched them through their black goat, Black Philip. 
The family's trust in each other begins to unravel as accusations of witchcraft grow. Catherine's grief and paranoia is of particular interest, as it leads her to believe that Tomasin is responsible for the family's misfortunes. In a desperate attempt to restore order, William locks Tomasin and the twins in the goat shed overnight, hoping to protect them from the perceived evil within the family. That night, Tomasin witnesses a horrifying scene. The witch enters the shed, killing the twins, and drinks the blood of the goats. The next morning, William is killed by Black Philip, who gores him with his horns. In the aftermath, Catherine, now completely unhinged, attacks Tomasin, accusing her of being a witch. In self-defense, Tomasin kills her mother with a knife, leaving her as the sole survivor of the family. In the film's chilling climax, Tomasin, now utterly alone and traumatized, seeks solace in Black Philip. She asks the goat to speak to her, and to her horror, he does. Black Philip reveals himself to be Satan, who has been manipulating the events all along. He tempts Tomasin with promises of power and freedom, offering her a life away from the oppressive religious and societal constraints she has endured. In the final scenes, Tomasin, now fully embracing her newfound identity, signs her name in the Devil's Book, sealing her pact with Satan. She then follows Black Philip into the forest, where she encounters a coven of witches performing a ritual around a fire. The witches levitate into the air, and Tomasin, joining them, rises into the night sky, her face a mixture of fear, ecstasy, and liberation. And with that final scene, the movie ends. Hello there, friends! For those who skipped, I hope that you'll enjoy the movie, and that you'll let me know what you think of it in the comments once you've done so. For everyone else, I hope the plot sounded haunting enough for you to see it yourself, because it's such an interesting view on the olden days of 1600s America. A little bit slower than a lot of the videos that I tend to prefer, but it has a charm to it, and that's why it made it onto the list. Speaking of, I have 28 more movies I'll be sharing with you. What do you think they could be? How do you feel about The Witch being on the list? Would it make it onto yours? How do you feel about the ending of the movie? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to discuss horror more in depth with you all, so feel free to join the Wicked Encounters Discord group. If you like what I do and want to support me, maybe consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the little bell icon so you know when I post. If you want to support me in other ways, maybe check out my Patreon. Speaking of patrons, I'd like to give a big thank you to mine, Nicola and Beefalump. You guys are simply phenomenal. Well, that's all I've got time for today, but I hope you'll join me tomorrow. Remember, I'm Allie, this is Wicked Encounters, and I'll see you next time. Bye!